thought you were going to get another speaker from up there. Oh, right. That's my pain. Right, um, I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about uh, why Barnet House and Action Group was formed. Uh, we've, about two years ago, with the support of Unite, to address the lack of housing at the time and to have a group specifically about housing. As BAPS has been said already, we're so overworked fighting the outsourcing of our public services. Little did we realise how critical the issue of housing was going to become and that housing would virtually become a commodity. You would think that providing the most basic human need would be a priority, but not in Barnet. Shockingly, Barnet Council are blatantly focusing on houses for the rich and are actually caught in homelessness. We began by working and organising with the Our West Tender campaign and spent the next year supporting them, and I'm sure Yasmin will expand on that later. Basically, our role has included supporting residents facing eviction, applying pressure on the council through organising publicity, local and national, through social media, TV, press, petitions, holding marches, rallies, protests, sit-ins, helping to educate tenants on their housing rights, advocating at court and housing on the housing office, and pretty much anything and everything possible to support residents and to publicise the effects of the council's punitive housing policies and strategy in Barnet. None of, us, none of us were experts, and we were learning as we went along, but we were never ceased with amazement at what we found was going on. Shocked doesn't even cover it. Tenants being lied to and told not to bother turning up for their eviction hearings at court, families moved from one regen state to another and then back again, leaseholders offered over £100,000 less than their market value on their CPOs, Mentally and physically ill people were being told that Barnet had no duty to rehouse them. Public land practically given away to developers, in this case, Barrett's. I could go on all night. I, oh, I really could, I tell you. <laughs> then, we, <laughs> then we heard about the eviction of the Sweet Sway estate, very late in the day, unfortunately. And together with the Focus E15 campaign, we initiated and supported the Sweet Sway Resists occupation. I began a political occupation of, the, um, of one of the empty houses. Um, uh, the occupation grew from one house to about 30 houses on the estate. And for those of you that don't know about what happened on Sweet's Way, it was a small estate of 150 odd houses, originally owned by the MOD and sold to a private developer, Arningtons, and used by Barnet Council to house homeless families through Notting Hill Housing Trust. Beautiful homes, only 35 years old, but then Barnet Council gave Arningtons permission to build nearly 300 luxury apartments, no social housing included, and Arningtons instructed Notting Hill to evict the whole estate so they could bulldozed it down. To say that we were shocked before was an understatement. And then... Can you, can you bring it to the Well, I'll try. Please. But you know what? I think yeah. this really needs to be said. So oh. sorry if I have to be a rebel with you as well as everywhere else. Brutal evictions of very short notices, no support or information. Residents having to leave their belongings. The whole estate looked like a scene from the apocalypse. Furniture, toys everywhere. Residents told that Barnet Homes could do nothing to help them until the actual day they were evicted. One resident told to move to Birmingham that very day, and if she didn't comply, then that would be registered as her making herself intentionally homeless and discharging her from the housing list, meaning the council has no legal duty to offer any more housing. Whole families discharged because the whole process is not explained properly. Can you really then? Yeah, I will. Re I will. To speak. Many residents uh, moved to Grey Park, which is just another regeneration estate. So then they'll have to go through the whole process again in 12 months to two years. We've since found out that Arlington's have sold the land onto Taylor and Whitby, one of the four biggest developers in the country, 
and at the top of the list of land banking companies, that is that they hold 184,730 plots, which they haven't built on, and ensures the price of land and property stays up and keeps going up, which is part of the reason that we have a housing crisis. Incidentally, Vara, the developer that the council... Jeanette, yeah, well, no, really, you the, really have to stop yeah, because well, John McDonald's is I've just got it. As soon as he comes in, I'll shut up. No, the council, no do it before. <laughs> just let me get this we out. Get the this idea. Bit, yeah? The council <laughs> chose the West Hendon, Vara's developers. They are land banking 142,123 houses. And together... They have earned more than 1.5 billion in payouts to their shareholders last year. Is this one? The people of West Hendon are all being evicted from their houses, right? And the land has been given away to Barrett for three quid, for God's sake. Do you know what I mean? Sorry. It drives me mad this stuff. I know, but everybody, people do know. Is there anybody who doesn't know? don't know, I've got to go on. If you do know, it doesn't matter. We can read it. We get the general idea, honestly, and we're all sympathetic. I have to also have the people. I might be back again later. Sorry, is there a website? They should go. There, there are two more um, short speakers here, but I'd like to just take something for, um, some questions from the audience. That gentleman at the back, thank you. And John McDonnell has arrived, so we need to hurry up. <coughs> yes. with people who are doing these things. What I don't hear spelled out in this room, because we're all preaching to the converted in a way, is the fact that these are people who don't know what they're doing, my friends. They know exactly what they're doing. Yep. It's an ideology they're doing. It's what the BMA has to confront them with. It's what we all have to confront them with. And we have to find a way of speaking their language so that we can get through the crowd. Thank you very much. Good, really good point. Yeah. There's one person here who has been invited to speak. Can you keep it brief? I'm sorry. I'll be incredibly quick. Um, and in a sense, it's an answer to what you just raised here. Um, now my name's, sorry, my name's Pilgrim, um, and I'm a community coordinator for Unite the Union. Um, and I don't need to tell anybody in this room how important trade unions are both in terms of protecting our workers' rights, but in terms of the bigger political struggle um, that we have to face, um, and the role that we've played within the Labour Party in bringing Jeremy Corbyn to power. But I think uh, what many people here may not know is that all of us can and should be in a trade union. Um, and I'm very proud to be alongside Jeanette, um, who is a member of Unite, and Glyn, who's just left. Um, and I'm a community coordin coordinator, um, and I look after Unite Community campaigning out in communities. And basically what we do is we take the strength and the voice of our trade union, and we take that out to people who are not in traditional workplaces, where people can't organise within a trade union, and we offer that same strength and power to our communities. So we've been fortunate enough in Barnet to have activists like... Um, Jeanette, like Tirtha from Barnet, um, Barnet Alliance for Public Services, and we've been able to back um, the Our West Tending campaign, the Radical Housing Network, and some of the struggles to protect our public services here. Um, so, the, so really, um, we are planning on starting up formally in Barnet. Um, we've got some really powerful activists here, and I would just like to encourage everybody here who's not already in a trade union, so whether you're a student, whether you're unemployed, if you're retired and in another trade union, where you're unlikely to get the kind of support that you would get from us for your sort of community and your political activities, I would encourage you to join Unite today. 
Um, and Jeanette and some of the other activists who've already spoken today will be in touch with you over the next couple of weeks. And come and get organised alongside your working colleagues, alongside your comrades in the trade unions. And that's what we need to do. We may not need to, to speak in their language. I think we need to speak louder and clearer and be better organised and make the most of all of the opportunities and all the organisational support that we can get and really make sure that we're supporting one another and giving each other full solidarity. Um, and thanks very much, and do join Unite the Union today. There's membership forms down here. Thanks, Thanks for being so brief, but very deep. Um, can I let, there was one more, yes, sorry, that gentleman up there has been like, can we have any more time? And then there's one more speaker that was actually invited. Speakers that have what time does Okay, I've just got a bit of a question to be honest. Um, so, um, and I'm, it's very inquisitive. I'm not like being accusatory. What I'm trying to, um, so on the on the stand for me um, and the weeks preceding that, I did a lot of campaigning in a lot of um, seats all over London. Um, like Hornsey and Green, where Catherine Wentworth was elected, which is fantastic. Um, but another place that I campaigned was Croydon Central, which was a seat that we lost by uh, 165 places. I think 165 votes. Um, and so I was just wondering. Um, it's not working. Oh, there we go. I was just wondering, isn't this, this is a bit about the SWP and being part of momentum. Um, and so I was chatting to some people from the SWP and they mentioned that they don't actually vote. Uh, okay. There are people who said they lived in Croydon, um, but they didn't actually vote. Um, and if the aims of momentum are to elect a Labour government, um, does that fall in line with momentum's aims? And again, that, I'm just wondering. Can they? Who are you asking the question from? Um, yeah. Anybody? Yeah, I assume. <laughs> okay, let me. Paul, you, you want to take that one? Uh, SWP don't vote. How about the answer from the SWP woman then? Well, I'm going to hand up. I'm not talking out of this one. I think everyone should vote, and I have a fairly clear view about that. But I'm going to hand over to, to um, Helen, who I have a lot of respect for, although I don't, I'm not a member of her political party. And she doesn't mind me saying in front of friends, she, if it hadn't been for someone like Helen, I might not have been elected myself as a councillor. So, I mean, but it's up to her to answer the, the position of the Socialist Workers' Party. As far as I'm concerned, we have to vote. Yeah, it's, it, it's not necessarily the best, you know, it's not going to change the world, but we have to vote, that's my view. Just to answer that, I think before the 7th of May, um, Jeremy Corbyn was not the leader of the Labour Party. You'd had the Scottish National Party seeming to present the anti-austerity uh, measure, but that left a gap. What, who's anti-austerity in England? And unfortunately, the Labour Party, not all of its members, a minority of its members, like Paul, like John McDonnell, like Jeremy Corbyn, Diane Abbott, they articulate consistently and always anti-austerity and for workers. So where there were Labour candidates who articulate that, the, the position of my organisation was we vote for them people. There's no doubt. This is about where do you stand, what do you do? And uh, I, can't, I don't know the details about their colleagues in Croydon, but I think that gives you a flavour. It's about who we vote, we vote with, or encourage people to vote for, who's going to deliver. Yeah? Simple. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank